Hello, and welcome to this tutorial. In today's video we will go through how to set up a Modbus server connection between two Siemens S7-1200 PLCs using Modbus TCP IP protocol. I have already made a project and added my two PLC to the project. PLC1 will be used as the server, and PLC2 will be used as the client. If I double-click on PLC1 and go to the Protection and Security tab, then we'd scroll down a bit we will find a box to check that says Permit Access with Put Get Communication from Remote Partner. We then want to click on the PLC's Ethernet port. Here we can set an IP address to PLC1. If we then go to PLC2 we want to make sure there are no protection activated on this one. Then we want to go to System and Clock Memory, and enable Clock Memory Bits. And then we can set an IP address to this PLC. The IP addresses of the two PLCs have to be in the same subnet range. This means the three first parameters have to be the same. But the last parameter must be given an individual number. We can now go to the main block and do some programming. If we open up the instructions tab then go to the map named others, here we can find a Modbus TCP map with the Modbus TCP function blocks. We want to add a Modbus TCP server block to the programming rung. I will make a global data block and add all the server blocks input and outputs, except from the holding register input, that one need its own data block. To know which data type we should give our tags we want to click the function block and press F1. Here we can see which data type is recommended. I will add all tags to the function block. The connect tag have a special data type called TCON IPv4. This tag we need to set all the parameters to. The first one called interface ID we want to set to 64. It is because the local profinet port on our PLC have a preset value of 64. To find the value of different ports on the PLC we can find it under default tag table, then go to system constants. The ID parameter is the Modbus ID number, I will give it ID number 1. Connection type we want to set is TCP IP, which is value 11. An active establishment should be set to 0. The address parameters we want to add the Modbus client's IP address, which is PLC2. And remote port should be set to 0, and local port to 502.
For the Modbus holding register input we want to make another global data block. Here we want to add an array of integer with the array limit of 0 to 15. This means we can read 16 Modbus addresses from the client. Then to give the tags individual addresses we want to right click on the data block and go to properties. Then we want to uncheck the box that says Optimize Block Access. Now if we compile the data block each tag will be given an address. To point the input to our data block we have to type p hashtag db3 dot dbx and the first address of the data block followed by the data type and length. I will now add some simple programming that will make my outputs turn on if my Modbus server's values goes above 50. If I open up PLC2's main block, I already prepared a Modbus client to it. I won't show how to set up a client in this video, but if you want to know how to do that, I will leave a link in the description below to my Modbus TCP client tutorial. Now the last thing I will do before testing this out is to compile everything, and then download. I will now monitor both the PLC's data blocks and modify some values. As you can see when I modify one tag on PLC2, then PLC1 will receive the value, and if it's above 50 an output turns on. And if I modify the value below 50 then the output will turn off. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe.